This is a review video of the very breathtaking drama Someday or One Day. 想见你 Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where junkie and good storytelling shares their thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. 想见你 Someday or One Day is. A 13-episode drama from Taiwan, and there's a version that's 26 episodes. So basically, each episode gets cut into two, and then with stuff that's slightly edited out, that's being aired on Tencent.、And、the drama just finished airing over the past weekend on Sunday, and I've been following this drama since early January when I discovered it because it only airs one episode a week, and then they stopped. For the Chinese New Year week, so there was a two weeks gap. That long break was、uh, really unfortunate because before it happened, everything was normal. When it stopped, it was the coronavirus thing. So by the time the drama came back, which is 14 days later, the real world has changed so much that I almost forgot about this drama. So when I went back to look at the final two episodes, it almost felt like a century has happened in between. Anyway, if you've been following my social media accounts and then if you've been looking at my posts on YouTube and previous videos that I've made, I've mentioned this drama multiple times, and I said I'll make a review about it. It is. I'm saying it. It is the best contemporary drama in Chinese language that I have seen since I started this channel. Full stop. Nothing is gonna exceed it anytime soon. Everywhere that Chinese language drama can be produced, I don't see it happening anytime soon. Definitely not from mainland. <laughs> no. Probably only from Taiwan. Like when、um, really good storytellers in Taiwan decide to do another. A、uh, really good drama. This drama started airing in 2019. So last year, there are a couple of dramas coming out of Taiwan that are just impressive. Honestly, the small dramas in Taiwan just destroys, flatlining all those shitty Chinese mainland dramas. <sighs> it's just very depressing for Chinese drama reviewer to to see that, but it's the fact. I have to acknowledge that. I cannot tell. 捂着良心说话 okay? Just hiding my conscience and and say something that's. I don't believe it's true. In this review, I'm actually reviewing this drama. I'm gonna first be spoiler free. In many ways, it's really hard to do this drama review without making spoilers because the nature of the drama is so tangled into the、uh, method of narrative that if I don't talk about spoilers, it kind of just doesn't explain what the drama is and why I'm so hyped about it and loved it so much. So when you go and watch this drama, first. It will appear to you as a very standard contemporary romantic story that's slightly sad and melancholy. But just about one sixth into the story, it starts to get really interesting. The plot engine starts to run, and you realize the story is much, much, much more complicated than it first appeared. And everything you've seen before is just setting the big epic. Running of the engine up, and then the story takes this turn. Has that a lot of detective with quotation mark element into it? It needs a lot of logical thinking. You need to try to figure out what is what and who is who and how is that working? What is the mechanism of this magic thing that's changing and affecting all the main characters' life? And just as you think you have it figured out. Something would happen and make you go, oh, okay, what? So basically, what I've seen so far, which is about halfway through this drama, is totally actually running under another premises that I was not aware of. So now I have to think back from the beginning about everything that has happened because this thing that happened just let me view everything that has happened in a totally different light. And then that story continues, and you think, okay, now I know what it is. And then something gets introduced in it more, and you're like. Okay, now it's explaining even more of what has happened. The structure of the story has many turns and twists, and it's very satisfying. I love the fact that they did it with very light, subtle touches. That when you go back and review, you realize all the. Threads have already been laid there, but then before you know why they're there, you are not aware of their meaning. And once you are aware, you go, "Oh yeah, I see, I see. Oh wow, that's so cool." This is a type of a brain wrecking drama that、um, people who like brain wrecking dramas would really like. So the title of the drama, "Someday or One Day," is the、uh, title song's name. It, the title song is an English song. The Chinese title, "Xiang Jian Ni's." 
a uh, literal translation would be wanting to see you. And wanting to see you becomes a very important thing that the characters in the drama have to do in order to make something happen. And what I love about this drama even more is towards the ending, uh, about the last two episodes, you start to get the feeling that um, the script is not just trying to be clever. It's not just a plot heavy drama that looks really sexy in terms of being exciting and having a lot of twists. It has hidden and buried very important messages that are much, much less sexy, that are looking at real people's dilemmas in life. It's looking at things that maybe many people suffer throughout their life that unfortunately some people don't get to grow out of. And I've seen uh, some reviews from other reviewers who are saying the ending is lesser exciting than they anticipated just because all the previous plot turns and twists are so exciting that they're like even looking for a higher hit at the end. And it kind of doesn't really happen in that extremely exciting way. I, on the other hand, actually totally don't agree with that. I think the way that they ended the story, it clearly shows you being clever and being plot heavy is not really what the story is trying to get at. I think that is actually what makes this drama even better than say if it's just a pure thrill ride that has turns and twists and higher and higher hits of excitement. I like the way it ended. It really just reminds me of a lot of older stuff that I've seen from Japan, like in the golden ages of Japanese drama in the 90s. If, <laughs> if you're old enough, you've seen those dramas, you know what I mean. I really appreciate the details, the craftsmanship, those two writers' effort of putting that very important message inside this seemingly extremely exciting plot device that gets people want to invest their time and energy into the story. But eventually you, you open it up and you see something that is definitely less sexy, but um, really meaningful. <laughs> That's my best attempt of telling you what this drama feels like without really spoiling it. Now I'm going to talk about spoilers. So if you are definitely not a spoiler lover, Go to this time code where I finished talking about that. This story on the surface is love story between two people, but they are in love in the weirdest circumstances you can imagine. It's a morbid strip. So, you know, the very famous, like the end goes on the surface and it can come back uh, on the other side, mm, strip. It is a time loop in a way that the future affects the past, the past in turn affects the future. So everything becomes tied down in this ring that kind of is never ending. And our lead characters are in a way trapped in it. And they're trying to figure out a way to change things so that this loop gets broken. We're gonna have to name people with code. We have our female lead character, Huang Yuxuan, starting from her perspective telling the story. We're gonna name her girl number one. At the beginning of the drama, she has already lost her long-term boyfriend called Wang Quansheng. We're gonna call this boy number one. Her boyfriend died in an airplane crash two years prior to the beginning of this drama and she's still in that very sad mood. Then she receives some gifts on her birthday, 27th birthday, which is an old Walkman with a cassette in it. And she listened to it on a bus. And when she opens her eyes, she suddenly become transported in a different place and time. It's in the hospital. She wakes up and she is in a different person's body who happens to have exactly her face. So they have the same face, but it's no longer 2019. It's 1998. And the girl who has almost exact face apart from one mo on her face is named Chen Yunru. So that's our girl number two. And then she saw her dead boyfriend sitting beside this girl, but who now actually is a different person. Not Wang Quansheng, but Li Zwei. So that is our boy number two. So to recap, our girl number one had a boyfriend who died which is boy number one. She kind of mentally time traveled to a different girl number two's body with her memory and the girl number two's memory existing in the same body, which is more than 20 years ago in a different location, meeting a boy number two who looks exactly like her boy number one, but is a different person. So she started to live in this girl's body, meeting the boy number two and then their good friend, Mo Junjie. Now we're gonna call him boy number three and start to build a friendship. And because she has a very different personality than her host. So girl number one is the happy, sunny, go lucky person that everybody likes. Whereas her host 
girl number two, although having the same face, is a very gloomy, very introvert, not many people like her kind of character. Because of the second personality entering this body, she becomes more and more popular and she starts to build friendships. And then the story starts to take interesting turns and I'm not gonna go into details. But then somewhere down the line, you will find actually boy number two, Li Zui, has always been boy number one. He also had some magical time traveling fantastical thing happening to him, resulting in his consciousness being transported forward in time into the future, where he ended up in girl number one's dead boyfriend's body meets girl number one and has a relationship with her. So basically, it has always been girl number one and boy number two's love story. It's just the girl number one never realized that her boy number one actually has always been boy number two until she time travels into the past. So you see how this story works. It's the future affecting the past, the past affecting the future. Everything becomes a loop. I'm not gonna spoil all the plot for you, but because of this morbid strip problem, it becomes a really tragic story for a lot of people involved in this story for girl one, girl two, boy two, also boy three, and other people who uh, I haven't mentioned. It just doesn't end well for everybody. Our lead characters are attempting, trying to change things whenever they time travel so that it doesn't end up so tragically. While this is going on, it also is looking at the great theme I think of this drama is there are people who are naturally very popular, especially as you grow up in school environment, you know, bullying, all that type of thing. The popular people have it easy, whereas the unpopular people often suffers in silence and not everybody manages to climb out of it. Some people get destroyed before they could reach adulthood and it's a very real thing and it's very sad and cruel but it happens to a lot of people all the time. And the story really does dig at that theme especially towards the last two episodes when you start to see everything being pulled apart and everybody's real dialogue and, and, and motives get spoken out. It really is beautifully written. Now the spoilers are finished, let's talk about the acting. So the script is super well written, but if the acting is weak, it doesn't sell it. Fortunately, the acting of this drama is just ugh, so good. Especially our lead female, like we have to do this, right? Because Ke Jiayan is known to be a really good actress. She's Golden Bell winner. She's in her 30s, right? Like 34, I think, when she films this. She has to play two different ages, the late 20s and late teens. And you totally buy it when she plays a much younger age. There's nothing that sits wrong with you. You totally believe she can be a teenager. That's just like really good acting and also <laughs> a face that kind of like doesn't have age on it. Also, the great thing about her is she plays two characters, I hope that's not a spoiler for the people who don't like spoilers, who are totally different character-wise. They only use very little help, like um, a little bit change of the hairstyle really on her face. That's mostly it. Like slightly makeup change, but because that's different age range. So, you know, when you're a high schooler, you don't necessarily put on makeup. But apart from that, everything actually comes from her acting. It's like whenever she switches between the two characters, it's, it's instant. You instantly know she's playing A or B. It's so good. Then for our male lead actor, Xu Guanghan, who plays also two characters. I mean, you can say it's actually one character, not necessarily two characters. I mean, his work is more on like 90% on one character and then just 10%, 5% on the other. But anyway, it's also very beautifully done. And he's also in his 30s and he plays a teenager and I totally believe it. And also he has a wider age range. If you watch the drama, you'll understand what I mean. Then the female lead that he has to be a very young person, a kind of young person and slightly towards middle aged person. I'm totally sold on that. I also love the second male lead, Shi Bo Yu's acting. I love his character. His character is very, <laughs> makes my heart ache. He's the quiet, lovely guy who's like standing behind the scenes and not getting all the spotlight, but has so much kindness really in him. In many ways, all the attempts for the two leads to do in this drama, a huge part goes to they want to help second male lead character. They want to change what has happened to him. I'm so thankful for the casting of this drama to pick these three people. Also, the beginning title song and the ending song happens with like MV. So there's some very short MV at the beginning and at the end with the three main actors and four characters really. If you stop it, 
second by second. And you can tell actually the beginning and the ending song together totally spoil the whole drama for you. It's very symbolic. It uses a lot of symbolic imageries and it's not directly referring to things. But if you already seen the whole thing and you go back to look at the beginning song and the ending song, it's like, oh my God, they spoiled everything. They actually told you how the story is developing. What is what with each character and who is going to end up in what way. There used to be some US dramas that tend to do those things, you know, like hiding codes in the beginning titles or ending titles whatever. I literally haven't seen that in like Chinese speaking regions productions. So that's the end of this review. I know it's a bit long but I'm super excited and I really love this story. One week before the final episode aired it got leaked. The ending got leaked I think from mainland side because they have to send copies to uh, for censorship and the crew decided to film an extra <laughs> feature kind of very short scene to come back at the despicable behavior of those morons who are just trying to sell the last episode, I guess, for money because they know a lot of people really want to know what is the ending. This is what happened with Joy of Life, which resulted in kind of like the destruction of the drama in the second half in terms of its view and everything. I mean, I can tell the effort that went into creating this drama, writing that script, figuring out all the details for how things work is much more work than a usual drama production. No wonder people get really pissed I would be super pissed by this if it happened to my stuff. Like, I will go volcano. Thank you for this production, for um, for everybody involved making this drama. It's really the best gift that I can have during this super depressing time in the real world. And it honestly is the best thing I've seen so far in 2020. And because this drama aired in 2019, but I didn't discover it until this year. So to me, it's a 2020 drama and it definitely is the best one. It has set a really, really high bar that um, will be extremely hard for people to overtake. Thank you for watching Avenue X. Please go and check out someday or one day. And I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.